it goes across anywhere. I guess it makes uh makes it good that you know we're drywallers, right, B? Yeah. <laughs> done this before. We've done this before. But to fix walls, do I have too much in there? No, I'm good. bottle of water in the pack too. Oh, bubbles in there like that. Huh? It's a little bit different than Durban, just how it um just kind of dissolving in the water and bubbling up. Yeah. Uh oh. No, we're good. I still got quite a bit more and plus you want it really soupy. I wish there was a little I wish because it's slanted downhill you know, this is gonna run right out. And I, like, I don't, I've never, I've never done this before. So I don't know whether to stop it from going out or just let it go. I guess just let it go. I just don't wanna screw this up. Make it a little thicker. Well, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be thin enough to really settle down in there. That's close. That's so dang close. I'm going to screw this up. I only got one shot at this. It's getting a little tricky on the hill. Yeah, that's what I was saying, you know, down in here. You know, so we got the big toe right here. And what we're, what we can see, I don't know if the camera can see it, but, you know, what we see for an impression will be big toe. And the toes come across through over into here. There looks as if that there could be like some impression right here. But then the ground is, is, you definitively you can feel the ridge all the way around it especially up here then it becomes like almost what two and a half two and a half inches deep right here all the way through into here comes over into here and what really makes me think that this is a sasquatch track is because of this right here is one of the biggest things prior when i was here there is not a log or a root or anything in here to have stopped this from staying up this would explain the mid-tarsal break. I've got in prior videos and pictures that we are like five and a half, six and a half inches. It's like five and a half inches across from heel to heel. The rear is like four inches, then comes right out to five inches. And then from here to here is like six and a half inches. Then it starts to drop down to like six and a quarter, back down into like five. And then across the feet is like five, six inches. It's a very square track. And, uh, again, what I think happened, what I really true believe that happened here is that I think that the Sasquatch was coming towards base camp, checking me out that night. And then I must have moved or made a sound that startled it. And I think that it backtracked off this trail and backed up into here three, four steps. And then squatted down maybe. And got behind these, uh, you know, balsam trees into some cover and hid from me. While I was down there with my thermal camera scanning the woods. Not thermal, I'm sorry, night vision. I'm down there scanning away. And uh, that's my explanation for why um, there isn't more tracks coming out of the woods up this way. In the trail, this has all been walked really hard for years and years and years up through here. So it's already very, very solid ground. So the Sasquatch, not wanting to leave tracks, would have walked down the trail, getting closer and closer and closer until I made a movement or a sound that startled it, and then it backtracked up off the trail to get up out of the way. And then maybe it came back out 
and then and then took off and went wherever it went but followed the trail out so that it wouldn't leave tracks <sighs> all right here we go so it's not gonna it's not gonna fill that all the way I just wish I could get the depth up here. Just keep pouring. I know it. I know it. I just don't want to screw this up. Um, it didn't run down like I thought it was going to run down. It, it didn't run all the way out. I mean, I, I agree that maybe it should have been a little bit thicker, but... No. What do you think? No? Uh, if you're going to do it maybe ahead of time, it, it's... Just leave it the way it is, right? Yeah. Just, leave, just it leave it the way it is. Oh, it's getting caught in my light. Oh. I bet you yeah, put a little bit more to it. How does... um? With the plaster, does that kind of get a little thicker as uh, it starts to set? Maybe you can pour it in as it gets a little thicker, get the top filled in. I might be able to. I'm not, you know, I've only worked with plaster being a drywaller. I only worked with plaster, I think, maybe I remember going to Bolton Landing to the uh, oh, this I already remembered that I wanted to do this to show everybody something when it comes to uh, you know, just like concrete. If you hey, look at that. Look at that set right in there like that. That was a good idea. If you tap the ground, it'll make everything drop down. It's like when they pour concrete and they actually, they use a vibrator to vibrate the concrete, vibrate the air bubbles. So you can see little air bubbles puckling out of there. And that one just popped. God, I want to get some more up there in the top to really get the depth of that heel. But well, when you pour it in there, look at it. I know it. It's pretty. Uh, yeah. Um, the thing is, is that this track is on a hill. And it's on a slope. So the more, if it was flat, this would be awesome because I could have filled the whole track right up. Up here in the back side of this, up into here, we still got what you say probably inch and a half d oh There's yeah. about an inch and a half up in the top that that would show the full size of the heel the other thing i'm worried about is going to be very thin right where the dermal ridge is coming down into the rest of the foot down and uh you know what you want I mean, to work really well is um let's just try to just build this a right box up. around it we could add some uh i mean you don't even need a two by four but if you just dug you know 10 inches out around the track, dug little grooves with the board, just stuck the boards down in there so you had a box mm -hmm. that could fill up and over the track. Yeah, no, you're right. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, no, that would have been a great... You know what? Sorry about that. Well, you would have thought that that would have really thickened that up good. Well, usually, you know, Dylan and I know that when you're working with Durban, um, the last, you know, five minutes or so of, of time that you have to work with it before the hardening agent start to set up, the, uh, the Durban will generally be start to become, you know, very stiff. And uh, at that time, then you can use it to fill holes where you... Is the bucket heating up? No. Oh, it's not heating up. And unfortunately, um, we didn't read the bag. 
<laughs> I didn't read the bag before we left, so I don't know if this takes 90 minutes to dry or if it takes freaking 45 minutes or 20 minutes or or what the hell. I just so wish that there was something right here to where I could just literally at least fill this up so it backed off into that to get some depth over that dermal ridge. Because I'm afraid that if we only have it this thin and that's only a half inch deep, when we pull this thing out of here, it's just going to break. Maybe give it a shot. I know it. I mean, the toes are back into here already. It's the bottoms what we're going to see, right? So, I mean... <sighs> Even that right there is going to be 10 times better. Yeah, I keep pouring it in the back. That was a good idea. Because it isn't sliding down all the way. Wow, that stuff really is a little bit... Oops. Oh, there it went. Look at this night crawler. What the hell? Look at this guy coming out. He's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Freaking night crawler and the pine needles. That's amazing. You know what he felt? He felt the... Uh, the vibration. He felt the vibration of the ground, yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. I know those toes are back in here. So I know that I'm not screwing up the toe. Don't those people that um collect worms Ooh. and stuff for fishing, don't they have like a some sort of audio device? And they put it on the ground and they just come crawling right out of the ground. Well, Who you can you can that? actually take uh, you can actually take uh, rods. You can take rods, electrical rods, and you can. Uh, ooh, there you go. I'm covered in the shit now. I ruined my hunting coat, and it's actually starting to uh, set up now. Yeah, that's nice. You got a, a big pile of it right on the center. <laughs> Great film guy I am. I got this pointed right at the ground. Pointed at right at the, the ground. Staring. Nice. Oh, don't do it too much. Yep. That stuff really just moves around. Well, I think we've covered the track, though, okay? So the track is down in there. We're good. So, so thin in that center spot. Well, a little bit, but... Well, but, right, plaster sets off a lot harder than dirt on, anyway. <sighs> All right, I'm just going to wash my hands off. In the All right, hold on. Did help us wet? No, I just I'm taking that coat off because I uh, because I'm I'm gonna put my hands in here and get more on that back of that heel now, and I'm just gonna go down and wash my hands. I really want to get the depth of that heel. Yeah, I, I've never worked with plaster before. That thing is way different texture in Durban. Well, I will. It moves around. It's very, very, very smooth. about as good as I can get right there all right there it is there it is man cool. isn't that something Big foot track. Woo! this is what I was looking for baby this is was a trophy for the year and you know what's so hard is like you know it 
in so many times when I'm out here and I'm, you know, cutting a video and I keep thinking to myself afterwards and before what people must think. Oh, yeah, you know, but come on, you're acting, you know, being so fantastical and shit like that. Well, you know, I, I, I have made it my mission and I've said on other videos, I will not do that. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm not telling you that this is definitely a Bigfoot track. I'm just telling you that this track was not here the day prior. And when I walked in here in the pouring rain, as big as this track was and as deep as this was, I would have seen that. I saw that bear track in the muddy water where that bear had followed me out earlier that evening. This track was placed here the evening that it poured out. And around 10.30, quarter of 11, after the rain had subsided and I had gotten that fire going, I was standing out there and everything calmed down. And across the pond, I heard that, Snap, crash, and he pop, and branches hitting the ground, crash. And I got my, had my thermal, I had my night vision camera right in my hand. I went up, and I went right over towards the rock ledges, right where that area was. I couldn't see anything over there because of that pine bough and the smoke from the fire coming out and a just whiting out my night vision. I quickly went and got my digital recorder turn that on and just nothing else happened for the night i went to bed i can say that those hours that i recorded on the digital recorder i did listen to the following day then i have not listened to it completely yet again there was one particular piece of that audio that is of a bit of interest it was a different type of sound. At first I thought I had something messing around in the camp. It sounds like they're eating plastic. Then I realized where the recorder was and that it's the wind moving my tarp around. At least that's what I'm going to go with because there's no way that all that went on and all that noise while I was laying in bed and didn't hear it all. So, but there is, I don't want to call it a grunting noise. But there is some sort of noise that I heard that sounded abnormal. But I went to bed, and the next day, here's this. There was four tracks, and that's it. And this is the same exact spot that I thought I was videotaping. A nice little seven-point buck with a beautiful white drop tine on its left side facing me. And I made a huge mistake with the video camera not waiting for the digital touch tone icons to come on before I hit the record button. All I did was open the camera. I saw the picture and the deer and I hit record and prematurely screwed up, but I'm glad that happened with that. And it didn't happen the first time I actually get blessed with the opportunity to video a real champion of the forest. Be careful of it not sit on your hands. Yeah, I'm gonna go get this washed off right now. And uh do you do we have any more <sighs> any more light? Well I guess you know if you want to you can stop the recording on that, Dylan.